So today we're actually going to go over a step-by-step -step on how Gary V, Mr. Beast and other big name content creators actually create their short form content. We'll go over the psychological side um, and how they actually specifically do their edits and how you can replicate this to actually blow your videos up as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing to think about when creating your content is what can you provide your audience? What knowledge do you have to provide your audience to stimulate them, to make them go, wow, this was a great video. So for an example is people watch my tutorials to gain knowledge on how to better their own edits. Gary V creates videos to help people change their own lives and their mentality. Mr. Beast actually creates entertaining videos for you to actually sit in your chair and go, is he actually gonna take his hand off that car or to win a million dollars? And it kind of stimulates the person or the viewer to actually watch their content. So something to think about when actually creating content is what can you actually provide your audience? So actually having subtitles in your short form content is crucial. A lot of people actually don't have their volume up and actually use the subtitles to actually read what you're actually saying. So this is actually key. Mr. Beast used it, Gary V used it, and other big name creators. So I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done through Premiere and it's a really, really simple way. So here we have our Premiere file open and we're dragging our clip that we just filmed for our short form content. And now we need to add the subtitles. So instead of sitting there manually adding every single word for word, it would take forever. Yeah! Oh! So there's a key trick that will save you so much time and it's through the text. So to actually get this up, if you don't have it already, go to Windows and just click, uh, click text. So from here, we have our main clip, we transcribe sequence. So if you had multiple audio files, you can click here and click the selected, the actual one that actually is your dialogue. So I've only got one up right now, so I'm just gonna click audio one. You can actually go mix and use them all if you had multiple speakers on different um, channels. But for now, I'm just gonna go audio one and transcribe. So this is grabbing my dialogue that I'm speaking through the whole video and actually has transcribed it all into text. So from here, we're now gonna go into captions and create captions from the transcription. So create cap captions. Now we wanna go into preferences because this is where you can decide how much of the sentence is actually popping up at once. So if you want one word popping up or you want a whole sentence pop up, this is where you change it. So the maximum length of characters, I'm just gonna go really low because I kind of want it popping up how Mr. Beast has it. So just kind of one word, two word sentences. So minimum duration, 1.2, gaps between frames, go zero. Now here, whoops, here decides how many lines you want. So do you want two words popping up below each other or you just want single words popping up. So I'm gonna go single and create. So from here, we can highlight all our clips and come up to essential graphics. And this is where you can edit the, the font style, how large you want the words and things like that. So I just want it a little bigger. I'm gonna use a font similar to Mr. Beast and it's called Kamika Axis. So a lot of people are actually using this. Um, you can download on Defont, um, or you can use any other font. Whatever font best suits you, you can use. But I'm just gonna use this for now. Uh, from here, you can change the color. So let's just say I want it yellow. So it changes the color. And then for the stroke, I'm just gonna open that up a bit, change that black. Honestly, you can change it to whatever color you want. You can have it red if you want. You can have it, but I feel black is really clean and it's easier for people to see and understand, which that's what you want when creating this type of content. Now at this stage, you actually wanna go through your clip and make sure every word is correct. 
Now, Adobe Premiere actually does a really good job at correcting what you're actually saying, although sometimes there is a few little mistakes and you have to just correct yourself. So just go through your footage and make sure every word is correct. So as you're scrubbing through your footage and you find a mistake, I clearly say reels here, although it says rails, so it's clearly wrong. To fix this, you just double click where it says rails and just type in the word that you actually were going to say. So reels. And just do that for your entire clip and make sure everything is correct. So now I've gone through all my footage and corrected all the mistakes and now it should be looking like this. Now it doesn't have that punch out effect that Mr. Beast has where it's popping out and coming back. So Premiere has actually made a workaround because you can't edit all these subtitles to make any effects where it's punching out, popping in and things like that. So there's actually a workaround to this and the Premiere has just recently updated it to actually be able to do this. So you highlight all your subtitles, you come up to graphics and titles and upgrade caption and graphics. So click that and now it should be in the layers below. So from here to have that pop out punchy text, we're just going to zoom in a bit, go to our first clip, and now go to effects controls, set the scale keyframe, and set it to 50. Now go forward to, set it to 110, and then one more forward, and set it back to 100. So you're going to notice here that the text is coming on an angle down. We need it to kind of pop out. So to do this, you actually need to set your anchor point directly in the middle of the text. So to do that, grab your anchor point oops, and drag it down into the middle of your text. And now it should pop out directly in front. So now that we have it punching out, popping in, and it's looking good, we need to copy this and add it to all the other text. So right click, copy, zoom out, grab all the other text, make sure it's grabbing all of them. Okay, now right click all the other text, paste attributes, and don't have scale attributes times. So just remove that and press OK. So another thing to think about is actually associating keywords with colors. So for example, a negative word replacing the color from yellow as it is in the video to red and a word that is symbolizing healthiness to the color of green or wealth with the color of blue or green as well for the example of money. Um, this is something that kind of subconsciously helps the person that is watching it actually know what the color is and represents the actual mood of the color. So something to think about, a lot of YouTubers are actually doing it and a lot of Instagrammers and TikTokers. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. And it's really easy to do. You click the word, let's say followers was a positive word or you just want to change the color of that specific word, you would go here and change it to green or you can change it to blue or to pink, red, whatever color. I'm just gonna change it to green, press OK. So now when people view the content, it pops up green. So it's something to think about and it's really useful for keywords. So definitely do this in your videos. So now that we have our text sorted, another crucial part is music. So music in the background just kind of helps the audience kind of have something there and it's not that awkward silence. You don't want that in your videos. So in regards to music, music choice is key. So when you've got some happy, upbeat, something you're talking about that's really, yeah, like I said, upbeat, you don't want something like piano music and it's kind of really eliminating what the hype is that you're actually talking about. And like I said, it goes vice versa. If, you got, if you're talking about something that's sad, you don't want this upbeat song that's like cracking out with rock and roll and things like that. It doesn't help deliver the story or what you're actually trying to portray. So something to think about there. So now that we're back in Premiere, I have the audio clip I want. 
and let's just say I want just this part of the clip. So I put my in and out points of that part I want. I drag it down and it doesn't fit my whole entire process of my video. So that would usually be a problem. Now Premiere actually has a really useful tool called the Remix tool. So hold down um, your clicker, come over to Remix tool and click on that. Now from here, you grab the end of your audio clip, drag it for the length you actually want. So I want it all the way to the end of my video. And now Premiere has automatically created the song through beats and cuts to make it sound seamless the whole way through on just the part that I wanted of that audio clip. Now this usually works about nine times out of 10 and I usually don't have a problem and it speeds up your editing time by a hundred times. It's honestly so much quicker. So now that we have our audio in, it's cut to length, the beats are good. We need to drop the background audio lower than actually our dialogue. We don't want them fighting together. We want people to actually understand what we're saying and they're not thinking, what the hell was that? Because the audio is just blasting like the music behind. So we're gonna drop it down a little and then test to see how it sounds. So that's sounding good. I can clearly hear my audio. The background music isn't drowning out my voice. Now another effect that can really help your background music is putting on low pass. So low pass, drag that onto your background music. So what this low pass effect kind of does is remove the high frequencies of the music. So if you've got something that's really high pitch and it's actually biting your voice when you're trying to talk, it removes that and just keeps the low frequencies. So it really helps when you're actually talking to people, when people can actually understand what you're saying and you're not biting your music. So with the low pass, once it's added, we click on the background music, the cutoff, just make sure it's under 4,000. I'm just gonna go 2,000 and then let's hear it. The dialogue is still clear. I can understand what I'm saying and it's not biting the background noise. So pretty happy with that. So now that we have our content shot, we have our subtitles in, we have our music done. Now it's time to actually have images pop up within your video that contribute to actually what you're saying. So having images pop up within your video every now and then that contribute to actually what you're saying is really important. It kind of breaks up the static, boring shot of you just standing there talking to a camera. There's something constantly going on that's stimulating the person that, or the viewer's brain. So for example, if I'm talking about time, we can have a stopwatch pop up in front of us, flicking around. Or if I'm talking about money, making money rain down. Just having things that kind of support what you're actually saying engages the audience more. So definitely have that as a specific feature within your videos and it's super critical and helps you out a lot. So also what you find in really engaging content is a lot of push in and zoom out shots. Constantly having the camera move back and forth actually engages the audience a lot more. Having something that is just stiff in the one spot and is not doing anything is really, really boring to watch. So to do that, you do it all in post. So you record your shot just as I'm doing right now and then come over to Premiere we actually want to make cuts in our footage to actually do our zoom ins, outs, and just constant changing up the camera angle. So I'm just going to go through. I'll make a cut here. So go to this razor tool or shortcut is just pressing C and now you should have the razor tool. So just making cuts in your footage. Coming back to our main cut, we click our main footage. We come up to effects controls. So we bring the timeline to the start of the clip. Set a keyframe at scale, 100%. And then come roughly to the end. Zoom in to whatever feels necessary for your clip. It's entirely up to you. I'm setting it at 150%. And now I'm just gonna drag it all the way to the end. 
So now that we've got a push in, I'll show you the clear difference it actually makes in your footage with just having a zoom in. So coming from this, so just static clips talking straight is a complete difference. And it's such a simple thing that makes your audience kind of engage more with your content. So overall in saying that, like I said, you need to use those push-ins, pull-outs, slow ones, fast ones, whatever you feel. It just really helps break up that static boring shot. You need to use it, it's crucial. So now that your content's created, your text is done, your audio is done, you've done push-ins, pull-outs, the last thing to do is just add those little sound effects. So adding sound effects to images as they pop in, as they spin out, as you push in with shots, push out, they just add that little bit more of an element to your video to make it stand out. So highly recommend just adding those small sound effects. You can find them on YouTube. You can get copyright free ones from specific websites like Envato, Soundstripe, um, Musicbed, all these other types. Um, but yeah, there's, there's multiple websites you can get sound effects from. You need to use these because they help kind of engage your audience more when actually creating these type of content and videos. So overall, I hope you actually liked the breakdown of how big name content creators like Gary V and Mr. Beast actually create their short form content. If you like videos like this and want more, uh, hit the subscribe button, chuck um, what tutorials you actually want to learn next in the description and we'll see you at the next one. Let's go.